Hello my scholars, you are welcome to my school YouTube channel and my name is Frank. In today's video, we shall be discussing about electromagnetic field. But in today's video, we are going to be looking at the part one of it. So relax, do not get anywhere, I'll be right back. Well, welcome back to my school YouTube channel. Like I said earlier, we shall be considering the first part of electromagnetic field. So before we begin with our lesson, let's quickly run through the objective for today's video lesson. Objective number one, understand the concept of electromagnetic field. Two, identify the direction of current, magnetic field and the force in an electromagnetic field. Number three, Explain the action of a loop of wire carrying current in a magnetic field. And four, explain the basic working principles of a galvanometer and electric motors. Five, describe the working principles of an electric bell and a telephone earpiece. And six, make an electromagnet. So let's begin with a lesson. So in the first slide here, we are going to be introducing the concept of electromagnetic field. So we'll be looking at the meaning of electromagnetic field and all the formulas uh, that will be needed as far as electromagnetic field is concerned. So let's begin. Electromagnetic field is a field representing the joint interaction of electric and magnetic forces. When a charge Q moves through a region of space, we have both electric field E and magnetic field B exist. The resulting electromagnetic field exerts a force F on the charge. So mathematically, the force on the charge F is equal to Fe plus Fm, where Fe represents the uh, electric field, the force of electric field, while the Fm represents the force of magnetic field. Okay, so Fe is equal to electric force okay or if um and it's a vector okay that's why you have these arrows on both ends okay so uh, fm is the magnetic force and it's also a vector thus the magnetic field is a vector field okay so mathematically if we have to separate all this f is equals to qe okay then plus m uh, for fm we have qvb okay so that if we factor out q since q is common to both uh, forces right so that will be having e plus v okay e plus then bracket open v times b bracket close okay where this arrow simply shows that they are all vector quantities the e the v and the b are vector quantities so let's move to the next slide so here we are going to be looking at interaction between magnetic fields and currents okay that is force on a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. So when a conductor carrying an electric current is placed in a magnetic field between the north and south pole of a magnet, it experiences a mechanical force which causes it to move. Okay, And this force is proportional to I, the current, I, capital letter I, flowing in the conductor then ii the length l of the conductor in the field then iii the strength b of the magnetic field called magnetic flux density and then iv the sign of the angle of the conductor that is direction of current okay that is the direction which the current makes with the magnetic field so this force is given by f is equals to b i l sine theta so let's move to the next slide to see what b i l represent okay but before then quickly note that the force is zero when theta is equal to zero degree that is when the direction of the current is parallel to the direction of magnetic field so in that case f will be equal to zero then two the force is maximum when theta is equal to 90 degrees that is when the direction of the current is perpendicular or at right angles to the direction of the magnetic field. So in that case, the force will be maximum. The direction of force is the same as the direction of motion of the conductor. When the direction of current is reversed by reversing the polarity of the battery, 
okay the direction of motion of the conductor is reversed to the opposite direction and then the direction of force is mutually perpendicular to both the direction of the current and the direction of the magnetic field so let's move to the next slide so here are some examples for us to uh, to put that formula that is f is equals to b i l sine theta into work but remember that the b in that formula represent the magnetic flux density the i represent current and the l represent the length of the conductor okay so here are two examples for us to apply that formula in solving so let's start with example one a current of five ampere passes through a straight wire in a uniform magnetic feed of flux density 2.0 times 10 raised to power minus 3 tesla calculate the force per unit length exerted on the wire when it is inclined at 30 degrees to the feed okay so in order to provide answer to this question we will have to move over to the board okay so first thing first let's write out the parameters that are given to us in this question okay and the first one is i which is current and it's given to us to be equal to 5 ampere why the second one is the flux okay the flux density which is b and it's given to us to be 2.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 tesla so in this question we are asked to calculate for force per unit length okay exacted on the wire when it is inclined at 30 degrees to the feet but remember that f is equals to b i l sine theta right but in this in the case of this question we are looking for f over l so what do we do we simply divide both sides by l so that if we divide both sides by l we now have force per unit length to be equals to b i then sine theta so basically this is what we are asked to calculate for in this question so the next thing is just for us to substitute uh, the values that are given to us but don't forget we are told that theta is equals to 30 degrees okay so let's substitute it now so here we have 2.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 then times current is 5 then times the sine theta okay so sine 30 is 0 0.5 remember 30 is one of those special angles so here we have 0 0.5 Right, so we can write this as 2.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 times 5, then times 5 times 10 raised to the power minus 1. Okay, because 0 0.5 and 5 times 10 raised to the power minus 1 are the same. So we can multiply these whole numbers, which is 2 times 5 times 5, that will be equals to 50. Right, then times, then we can now apply law of indices for the case of 10 raised to the power minus 3 and 10 raised to the power minus uh, 1, right? So in this case, we're having times 10 raised to the power minus 4, okay? Since we are multiplying, so we just add the powers, okay? So remember, force is given to us is in Newton, and length is measured in uh, meters, right? So let's put this in, um, let's take this to decimal point. So if we are to take this to decimal point, that means this uh, invisible point here, we have to, take it backward or move it backward four times so that will be equals to 0 0.005 newton per meter okay so this is the force per unit length okay acting on or exerted on the wire okay so let's return back to the screen to solve uh, to answer the example two question okay so example two a particle of charge Q enters a magnetic field of flux density B with a speed V making an angle theta with B if in addition to the magnetic field a uniform electric field of magnitude E is introduced such that the particle moves in a straight line derive an expression for the speed of the particle now let's move over to the board to derive an expression for the speed of the particle so remember in this question as you can see it's a combination of two forces okay one of them is magnetic force and the other one is the electric force so the total force f will be equal to f e plus f m okay so this f e represents the electric force Fm represents the magnetic force. Okay, so now let's shut out the parameters that are given to us. We are giving Q, okay, and we are also giving B. We are swear giving E, okay, and uh, 
once again we are giving and uh, theta okay we're also giving theta right so now we can now solve we are looking for v right so we can now solve now remember that fe is qe right then plus fm is qvb okay so that f is equals to q so let's use capital letter because in the question it is given to us as capital letter so here will be capital letter q then e plus capital letter uh, q v b okay so then sine sorry sine theta okay so here basically we are looking to make q here the subject of formula so what do we do we simply move q a to this side of the question so that uh, q v b sine theta is now equals to f minus q e now since we are looking for v so we divide both sides by q b sine theta so that v is equals to f minus q e then this will be divided by q b then sine theta okay so this is the expression okay for the speed of the particle so let's return back to the screen to continue with our lesson so next we are going to be talking about Fleming's left hand rule okay so the direction of motion the direction of force or motion of a current carrying conductor placed perpendicular to the magnetic field is given by Fleming's left hand rule okay so the Fleming left hand rule states that if the thumb so this is the thumb okay and the forefinger this is the forefinger and the middle finger this is the middle finger are held mutually at right angles to one another with the forefinger pointing in the direction of the magnetic field and the middle finger in the direction please let's move to the next slide the middle finger in the direction of the current then the thumb will point in the direction of motion or force producing the motion so basically this is it okay so this is just the explanation of the flaming left hand rule so this is the thumb and the thumb is pointing in the direction of the motion or the force producing the uh, the motion so as you can see on the diagram on the screen okay so fit patterns and force between two conductors carrying current so these are uh, the fit pattern okay this diagram represents the fit pattern and the force okay between two conductors carrying current so if the current flows in the same direction the force between those two conductors is that of attraction let's move to the next slide then if the current flows in opposite direction the force is that of repulsion as you can see in the diagram above so here in the diagram above just shows that the current are flowing in opposite direction look at this area pointing downward and look at this other arrow pointing upward indicating that the currents are flowing in different directions so in that case there will be force of repulsion between the two conductors so if two long straight conductors x and y lie parallel close together at a distance arrow apart and carry currents I1, I2 respectively, then the force per unit length between the conductors is given by F is equals to mu naught, okay, I1, I2 all over 2 pi arrow, where mu naught is equals to permittivity of vacuum and is, is equals to 4 pi times 10 raised to power minus 7 Henry per meter. Let's move to the next slide. Now the flux density due to x at y is given by b y is equals to mu naught i1 all over 2 pi arrow. And also the flux density due to y at s is given by b x is equals to mu naught okay, i2 all over 2 pi arrow. So that the force on s is equals to b x i1 l x, while the force on y is b y l to l y where l x is equals to length of conductor x l y equals to length of conductor y so next let's talk about feed patterns around a narrow vertical circular feed okay so it is given as b is equals to mu naught i all over 2 arrow where arrow is radius of the circular coil so this diagram represents the feed pattern around a narrow 
vertical circular coil. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. So here we are going to be discussing about the motion of a current carrying loop or coil in a magnetic field. So these are basically the diagrams. Okay, so A, B, C, D is the loop or coil, which is A, B, C, D. Okay, represent the loop or coil. So on the next slide, we will explain what is happening in this diagram. So let's move to the next slide. So when current flows around a coil or loop, with a number of very close turns placed in a magnetic field, the opposite side of the loop experiences equal and opposite forces, in bracket couple, which causes the loop to rotate. In the diagrams above, those two diagrams we have seen in the previous slide, the side AB of the coil experiences an upward force according to Fleming's left hand rule. Similarly, the side CD experiences a downward force. These two are equal and opposite forces separated by a distance B constitute a couple. The torque or moment of the couple produces a turning effect which rotates the coil clockwise about the axis PQ. If the direction of either the current or the magnetic field is reversed, the coil will reverse anticlockwise in accordance with Fleming's left hand rule. Okay, so let's move to the next slide. Now, the resultant force in this case is zero, but the torque T is given by T is equals to B A N I cos theta, where B represents magnetic flux density, A represents the area of loop or coil, Y N represents the number of turns, Y I represents current carried by the loop or coil, Y theta represents the angle between the magnetic field and the plane of the coil. Also, T, which is the torque, is equal to B A N I sine alpha. Okay, but alpha is equal to 90 minus theta. Okay, so that the torque is equal to B A N I sine bracket open 90 minus theta. Okay, so for a rectangular coil, the area A is equal to length times breadth. Okay, where L represents length of side AB of the coil, while B represents the width of coil or separation between forces. Let's move to the next slide. So therefore, T could be expressed as T is equal to B. So in place of A, since we are using a rectangular, um, we are using a rectangular coil or loop. In place of A, we replace it with LB, which represents the area of the rectangular coil. So that the torque now becomes B, then LB, small letter LB, then NI cos theta, or T is equal to B, then LB, NI sine alpha. But remember that LB here represents the area of the rectangular coil. So just take note of that. So when theta is close to zero degrees, that is a plane of coil parallel with feed, torque is maximum. But when theta is close to 90 degrees, plane of coil perpendicular to field, torque is zero. So just take note of this. So this is where we draw the cutting for the preview of today's video lesson. You can enjoy the complete video by simply clicking on the link in the description below and that will take you to my school website. On the my school website, you will have to subscribe to enjoy the complete video. So in the complete video, you will learn about the application of electromagnetic field. You also learn about the application of electromagnets and many more. So I believe you enjoyed the preview of the video you just watched. If yes, please do not forget to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and lastly tap on the notification bell to get informed as soon as we release the next videos.